this scene is called Trailer Park uh, Scatter. And um, it's funny, I was invited some years ago, uh, I believe around 2012 or so, uh, to an exhibition at the Phoenix Art Museum that was put together by a curator by the name of Jerry West. And uh, I'd never been to, a, to a, a reservation. I had a friend out there whose name was Michael Swearingen, and he lived in the Phoenix area. And uh, since I was invited to the show at, at the Phoenix Art Museum, he said, have you ever been to a reservation? And I said, no, Michael, I've never been to a reservation. He said, you want to go? And I said, certainly. And so as we were riding around, we were looking, and I was really absorbing the space quite a bit. And I was really quite taken with the amount of poverty that I saw in the Maricopa Reservation and all of these spaces. And Michael mentioned something about the poverty. And I, he said, oh man, this is just hard to look at. And I said, yes, look at it. And I said, it's so funny. Uh, I was immediately drawn to the space. And I said, this is what I shall paint of the West. Uh, because I grew up in poverty. I know that space. I understand that space. I understand what it feels like to be marginalized. I understand what the lack of opportunity is. And these spaces echoed that. And so I did an entire series on, on the reservation, the Maricopa Reservation, and this is one of them. I was surprised at, at how many trailers I saw out there, very similar to the South. A lot of graffiti was on some of them, and some of them were totally dismantled and unlivable. I saw a lot of outhouses. I grew up uh, in the South. My Aunt Dolly had an outhouse. So I was very, very taken with, with this space, uh, but I also realized that America tends to romanticize the West. Every country has had issues with poverty and the sharing of wealth. And what I saw here was these indigenous people have been marginalized to, to such a degree that I, I, it just broke my heart. And so I decided that, how do I help as a painter to move us forward in society? And so I decided to paint the spaces because what I realized about space is how it affects your health, how it affects you psychologically, how it affects your sense of place in a society. And so I wanted to reflect some of that back. I'm not saying that every Native American lives in this manner, but we are better than this. We should do more to help elevate these people who are living in these kind of social conditions. This is not right. And so as a painter, I feel like I need to capture this time, this place, and this moment. Because I know long after I am gone, I will not romanticize the, the, the West when I see such poverty and people living in these kinds of conditions. No more so than I would romanticize the South. So as a painter, I feel like I'm capturing something. I feel like I'm capturing the mood. And it was so hard to capture this kind of space. And there is a lot of, if you look at it, it's very abstract trees, it's, a, it's an organic feeling to it. There's a lot of energy in the brushwork. There's a sense of violence in the work. If you look at how it's scattered, you don't even know. It could look, it could, this could be a hurricane that hit the south or any part of Alabama or Georgia. But this is in the west. And it just shows you the power of nature upon anything that we built as a society. So it's, it's, a, it's a very complex type of thing to try to capture a space like this. It's a lot of energy in it, and it's a very disturbing energy. Uh, and I think we need to see that because this is what makes us better uh, to feel some empathy for people who live in these kind of social conditions. This is an uh, oil painting of uh, some of the structures on the Pima Maricopa Reservation. I was really, really struck by the geometric shapes of this and also the sense of light in, it, in the West, too. But what was really more uh, captivating for me as a painter, there was a collector at the West Selection. She was looking at one of the pieces and she said to me, Oh, it's, it's, so, it's so haunting. And she was really quite disturbed by it as we got to talk about the painting. Uh, I told her, I said, if you, you are in this beautiful museum, uh, imagine coming out of this, coming out of this home on a day-to-day -day basis and seeing this, this kind, of, kind of space, but it does seem psychological. Uh, she wasn't going to buy the painting edition, she was going to stay by it, but she ended up purchasing it. So again, changing people's point of view about someone's environment, sensitive to their, to their space. 
Also, I was very moved when the Queen's Art Museum uh, collected two paintings of mine of the Queen Mary Book of Rhythms that are now up at the uh, Queen's Art Museum. There was a gentleman there who was working at the museum, like of Native American descent, and he came over to me and he said, Thank you, Mr. Mitchell, for making us look. And again, uh, this is one of their structures. I added the flag. It's titled State of Emergency. And for me, when I look at poverty, I see it as a state of emergency. Uh, that, that this is something that we need to address as a country uh, to make us a stronger nation in the international marketplace. Uh, and aside from that, I'm hoping that some of these structures will bring some sense of moral consciousness to us to, to do something about this. So I titled this State of Emergency, no different when Hurricane Katrina hit. I also did a painting and a flag and I titled State of Emergency. Uh, so these are, these are incidents that have happened uh, that I feel that we really need to pay more attention to. No different than when you go down here to the, the right of me here, this one is, is titled for the following. When the pandemic hit, I did this painting, showing a flag half staff to, to recognize the people who were on the front lines, the medical workers, the people who were poor, uh, who, were, who had to go to work, who had no way of, they kept us alive. And so when you look at the dwellings, they're very, very humble dwellings. Uh, and that was on purpose too, because it's usually the poor, they're out front working on the front lines. And so that was trying to celebrate that. Again, using the United States flag as a sense of emergency. Uh, that, and also when you think about what I'm trying to say here about poverty, poverty is, you don't feel safe in poverty. Now, most of us, you know, are what it feels like to feel safe in a space. Now, when the pandemic hit, it didn't matter how much money you had, how wealthy you were. You were totally uh, captured by nature. And so when you look at that, we couldn't even move out of our homes out of fear of a pandemic of a virus. Imagine people who are living in poverty and not feeling safe in the space. So just think about that. Think about that the next time you see small towns that are disintegrating. These towns deserve more infrastructure. They, you know, I grew up in a town in Quincy, Florida, it's a small town. The, the town on the square, the square is suffering. There, are, I know that this country has an enormous amount of wealth to help these small towns. It, they're very unique places. They offer things culturally that other places don't offer. We need to go back and lend our talent and our hands back to those spaces and bring them up. They need help. And so when I'm painting these spaces, I want you to look at them. These are Americans. These are human beings. We are better than this. We are better.